Hello Slope community. I'm gonna show you the different ways you can create jumps and also other ways you can give a little bit more shape to the surface of your map. I'm just gonna create a simple surface over here. And now first thing I'm gonna do is grab it and then pressing the blue button. On this state, you can see that uh, I have like limited control points over here. It's kind of limited. You can move those around but you cannot like do extrusions or, or even continue creating uh, the shape of your slope. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna grab this object and I'm gonna add it and I'm gonna press on convert to subdivision object. What this does, it changes the type of the object. Now it's a mesh, it's uh, different from a surface. The kind of control you have over this object is much wider. When you're editing it, there are some things you can do. Like if you want to continue giving the shape to this object, you can actually hover the edge, you can hover a control point, or you can hover a whole face. So you can move a face like this, you can move an edge like this, and you can move only a control point like this. And you can uh, filter with the right thumbstick. Like if you put it right, now I'm moving only uh, control points. Then right again, now it's only edges. Now it's only faces. So I can grab like multiple faces at the same time like this. And you can put it on the smart option, which will try to detect what you want to move, like depending on what you're hovering. I mostly use this. After you have this set up this way, there are some things you can do. Like when I hover this edge and I hold the left trigger button, you can see that I uh, end up selecting not only this edge, but both edges on, on the end of this object. The same thing will, will happen if I hover this edge and then hold the left trigger button. I'm gonna uh, select all the edges where that tries to make a ring around this object until it finds an angle. So, so I can move it like this. Another thing is that when I'm selecting an edge like this, I can press the right trigger to extrude this edge. So you can like on this part over here, you can start giving a different shape to your map like this. Now you have like both ways for the player to continue riding on your map. So subdivision object is actually what I use when I'm creating my maps because I want this kind of freedom, you know. Uh, same thing I can do like uh, over here if I want to make my slope wider and give it more control points so I can start to, I don't know, start to make uh, bumps like this. This is a cool way to make jump, but it's not the, the best way to make jump. You see like the whole, the whole surface is kind of deformed in order for this jump to exist. I'm going to show you other ways to, to make jumps and also make holes and things like that. So I'm going to undo here a little bit so we have a simpler shape. You have to mind one thing that when uh, you have control points in the middle over here, it's good for you to, to make a shape of your slope where you have a little bit of um, angle over here. And right here, when I started extruding only one face over here and I did this, I cannot do this anymore. I don't have control points in the middle like I have a back there. So one of the things you can do is hold the A button on the right controller and uh, select the edge cut. With this, you can start uh, cutting an edge like this. I'm, I'm pressing the trigger to do it. And now I'm gonna press the trigger one more time. And then I'm, I'm just gonna press the A button again to, to put it back. And now I have control points in the middle of the section over here. So this is something that you can use to give you a lot of control of the shape you're creating. Another thing you can do is like the same way you can extrude uh, an edge like this. You can use the extrusion to connect one, uh, one part of the slope with the other and it's going to connect for you. You start giving your map even more complex shapes when you do this kind of stuff like this. You just have to mind that the number of control points you have on a section is going to have to be the same number of control points you're going to use to connect. So if this had more control points like I, I've shown you like this, now this is three control points I'm going to have to connect. So if I want to uh, bring this closer over here, I'm going to have to like fit them on three control points like this. 
and then they're connected as well. This is a very good way you can use to give better shapes to your levels. And now let's talk about jumps. So I'm gonna uh, bring this a little bit to the sides so we can have a bigger surface over here. And uh, there is one thing that you can do, you can extrude uh, a face, not an edge like, like I've shown you, but a face. So right now I'm selecting a face and I can make an extrusion when I select it and then, and then I press the right trigger, I can make an extrusion with it. And this can go forever like this. So, but the way I'm gonna use it actually is to extrude it a little bit and then put it this way, uh, like angle it a little bit to the side. And when I do this, you can see that I have a small jump here that does not form the rest of my map. And with the crease too, this one, like when you hold the, the A button and then you come to the crease too, you can actually crease this if you want to make this look more like a jump like this. When I get to this point, I like to have another edge over here. And then, uh, and this for me uh, looks much better like a jump, like this and like this. Because then when you crease, let me extrude this a little bit. So we give a little bit more space for this jump to exist. So then when I crease, you're gonna see the shape that is gonna, that's gonna form over here. I'm gonna crease this edge, this one, 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 and this one. Wait a second, it's gonna, it's gonna be better, you see. Oh, like this. So now, and, and I always try to bring them a little bit, uh, decrease a little bit further back. So now you can see that I have a jump that have, uh, that has like more the shape of a jump when you're skiing or, or, or uh, I, oh, this can get a little bit better because there is still one edge over here that is not creased. So, oh, wait a second, crease this edge. Okay, so now you have a very nice shape for a jump. So this looks more artificial, of course. When you do jumps only by selecting a face and doing like this, they become a little, uh, a little bit more uh, natural, you know, like those jumps that form with the snow. So you can use this as well. It's gonna work the same uh, inside the game. If I don't wanna have all this trouble uh, creating a jump like this, what I actually do is I create a cube and then I convert this cube to subdivision object. And from here, you're like almost uh, on the, uh, using a shape like that. You just have to extrude this face a little bit and you can can delete the faces of the uh, of the side below over here, and you can delete this face as well. You're practically oh, the only thing you're gonna have to do here is create a cut like this. Okay, because then you can delete uh, those parts. Now I have a jump like just like this that I can shape and fit anywhere in my map. So if, if I have a section of my map over here, let's make it uh, a connection right over here and make it like this. And I want to add a jump over here. I can just grab this object. You can always put the object the, uh, any way you want. It, it can be a separate object. If they have the same material, it's not going to be a problem. It's going to uh, feel similar to the player. You just have to mind uh, uh, not to do it like this because then you, your player can get stuck in here. You have to make it cross the model. But if you want to make it pretty, <laughs> uh, let's say this is a little bit bigger like this, or, or even better, let's use this and create a section over here just for this jump. So now I have uh, this face over here that I'm going to delete and I'm going to put this jump over here, but then like this is not working like this. So what you have to do first is you're going to have to edit this object and then use this tool over here, the merge tool. And 
click on this object and then they will both be the same object. Uh, the only thing you have to do uh, right now is connect those points. But before doing this, it, it will be uh, smarter to clone this object. So then you have like a shape you can use anywhere you want. And then with this clone, um, uh, add this guy over here. You can do it like this. Then you can give the shape you want to the object. Right here, you can see that there are two a control points over here and only one down here. So I'm going to have to create a control point over here like this. And another one, let me put this back a little bit. Another one like this. So I can connect them right. It always has to be the same number of control points. And then I, just, I can just leave it like this or I can use the crease to make it to make uh, an artificial shape. Make it like this. And right here, you can see that there is a deformation here. That's because um, this object doesn't have a control point moving from this side to this side. So, but if I do it like this, then you can crease this edge as well. And it's gonna be fixed. So you have to get used to creating this kind of shapes. Seems a little bit hard at the beginning, but when you get the, the hang of the, those kind of tools, uh, it's gonna set you free to create any kind of map you want. But sometimes I'm lazy and I just start adding jumps like this, you know, <laughs> on my map. I don't wanna have all that trouble. It depends on you, uh, depends. Like if you're satisfied with this, it's okay. Like you can, uh, sometimes it's just easier. And then like, uh, when, when you're satisfied doing, you creating your map like this and you see, oh, this is giving me a good flow. Then if you want to make this connected with the other object, then you can just do it. But it's not a problem to create your map like this. Like you can always edit an object and tra change the shape, make it bigger, put it wherever you want, you know. So this is kind of easier for you to create your map. And then if you want to refine the feeling of it, you can start connecting dots like that, like I've shown you before. So those are the ways you can make jumps on your slope. And this is the way you can edit any kind of object to give it a, a different shape. So uh, I usually always start with cube. Once you turn it into a subdivision object, you have a lot of freedom to do whatever you want. Like, this is something that you can do. Like, uh, like if you have something like this, well, at least try to extrude this. Uh, it's, not, it's not good to have um to have a shape like this uh it's not good to have a shape like this for your jump because when you have like really sharp angles like this the physics of the game can be a little bit uh buggy when when the player is coming up over here and and the board hits this edge is so sharp that sometimes the physics can have a little bit of problem so if you're using a cube, I at least recommend you to grab a face like this and extrude and then use a jump like this, whatever you want, you know, on your map. Let me show you uh, another cool thing that you can do. I'm gonna clone this. I'm gonna add this part, this section over here. I'm gonna extrude it to the sides. And then I'm gonna select using the left grip, the left trigger, I'm sorry. I'm gonna select this edge, extrude it a little bit. And if you want to make a cave on your map, it's super easy. Let's say you want your cave um, to begin over here and come back over here. I'm just going to select this face and extrude it down. And then I'm going to hit extrude again, extrude again, extrude again. So it's, it's getting a shape like this. And I'm going to delete this face. Let me extrude one more time. Okay, now I'm going to delete this face. I'm going to extrude this one more time. And I'm going to delete uh, this face over here. Now I just have to connect those control points over here. And you have a cave. Like, and, and, and you can start giving a shape for it to be easier to get to it and all. You can make it wider down here, like you can enter the cave and, and select the faces 
uh, to make it a little bit broader like this. And then maybe this is too uh, hard for the player to get out of here. So you can just select this face and make it like this and all. So uh, you have a lot of control when you're doing this kind of stuff. What I usually do for caves like this is I, uh, I try to, uh, to, to only for like a little bit of immersion. I actually take the surface too, use the control point and low poly, and I take the ice material. It's, it's gonna translate into ice. Let me see, oh, low poly, okay. And then I, uh, I do things like this. So when you're in there, you, you, it, it's gonna feel like you're seeing ice on the on the ceiling of the like you, you have to add it so it looks more uh, so it looks cooler like with, with some shapes like this but this is going to translate into ice inside the game this is uh, you can actually edit this kind of object and and convert it to subdivision as well and um, any kind of object that you convert to subdivision like this one the subdivision level can be uh, high or, or low. What I recommend is putting this at least in the middle over here, because if it's too high, your map is so smooth that there is a lot of polygons to make this to make this kind of shape like uh, over here. You cannot see the amount of polygons it's using over here, but it's using a lot of polygons. So um, you can actually see how many polygons you're using inside the game on the editing section. You can press the wireframe mode and you're gonna be able to see how many polygons your map is using. So uh, I always suggest uh, the surface of the snow at least on the medium subdivision level. You can turn it off, you're gonna see what happens. This is not what you want for, <laughs> for your map. Uh, but if you turn it on, just put it on the middle here and I think you're gonna be fine. And depending on what you're trying to create, sometimes you just want it off like this. I converted this to subdivision and it already turned it on, on the max level. I'm gonna turn it off and then I can start like adding different shapes over here like doing something like this to create like i don't know you can create whatever you want i hope you like this tutorial it gives you much more freedom to create whatever you want thank you for being a part of the slope map making community bye bye